Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to SWF Rebellion. I am, of course, your GM and commentator here for Rebellion C and Puma, and welcome to San Jose, California, ladies and gentlemen. We are coming off hot on the heels of SWF Capital Combat from Washington, D.C., and quite a few things have changed since then. One, our internet... Speaking of the internet championship, why can't this man just stay in the back and wait? Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the ring, and it pleases me so much to say your former internet champion. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Siler Jordan, and with his ribs and back taped up, he still has a smile on his face and I don't know why. What is on the mind of Siler Jordan? Of course, I'm sure he's going to tell us, as he always does. We never, we're never free from the grips of Siler Jordan and that ego. But let's see, I'm gonna let him come down to the ring here. I'm gonna use this opportunity to get a drink. Maybe uh, talk to some people here around the announce table while he makes his way to the ring. Well, congratulations are in order. Not congratulations for me, mind you. For the first time in my career here in SWF, I don't deserve to be congratulated because no, I lost. I didn't win, I lost at Capital Combat. I got the main event. I got put into a match I dubbed the Thrillimination Chamber, the Thriller Dome. And I went into that match with all the ego, all the bluster, and the internet championship. I went in with all of it and I lost it. I lost the internet championship when I got hoisted up onto the shoulders of one of the biggest, meanest men I've ever faced and he ripped my back apart. And in that moment, he forced me to choose my career or my pride. And in that moment, I had to give up more than just my pride, I had to give up my internet championship. I had to give up a title that I had turned into the top title in this company. You know, a lot of people be broken right now. And I am, physically, I'm broken. He hurt, he hurt me bad. I'm barely able to walk. I don't sleep so good right now. I'm healing, but I'm not 100%. But you see, that doesn't change anything about me, the man, the natural born thriller. So you see, what the thriller does is he goes out and he takes a challenge head on. He doesn't make excuses. I'm not going to make excuses. I got put in that match first. Who cares? I still lost. The man who won, Luke Luger, he got put into that match last. He didn't have to fight nearly as long, but you know what? doesn't matter because if I got put in last, I'd still be bragging when I won. So congratulations. That's what the thriller does. He congratulates Luke Luger on winning the internet championship. But you know what else he does? He goes back, he gets himself put back together, and then he challenges Luke Luger for that internet championship. He challenges him. And the nice thing is I don't have to work that hard to get my title shot. No, no, no. I've got a contract. A contract that says as long as I'm here in rebellion, I get a rematch 
So my rematch clause, I'm not waiting until the next pay-per-view. I'm not waiting another week or two till my back feels better. No, I'm going straight at Luke Luger. Tonight, I want Luke Luger for the internet championship one-on-one. -on -one. Don't leave that ring, Siler. I've got something for you. Listen here, my friend. It doesn't matter what you think you have. Now, I know for a fact that your back is messed up. I can tell that from your ribs and your back being taped up. But here's what you don't know. There is no rematch for the internet championship. There is no rematch clause for the internet championship for one major reason. And that reason is you are no longer a part of SWF Rebellion. That's right, I have spoken with the committee and along with three other superstars, you, my friend, have been traded. That's right. You didn't even get past Capital Combat before you were traded to Uprising. So I want you to step out of my ring, head to the back, and pack your bags, and you wait for that phone call from the Uprising GM, Jackson Montgomery, so he can tell you where to be next week on Uprising. So everybody, Wave goodbye to Siler Jordan because he will no longer be on SWF Rebellion. Goodbye. Well, folks, what had to be done had to be Done. Siler Jordan, you, my friend, are no longer part of us here on Rebellion. As I said, Jackson Montgomery, the GM of Uprising, decided that uh, he wanted Siler Jordan for Uprising. Well, we managed to come to an agreement and make some trades and send some people over to Uprising in exchange for Siler Jordan and a few others. Rebecca Evans, Nina Letter also went over there, and Mason Foster. In return, Rebellion receives Tyler Adams, Beverly Willis, a newcomer, Candace Kay, and Pasadena. So that is your trades. Four for four. Tyler Jordan is now on Uprising. But now, as that is done and over with, and Tyler Jordan is no more here on Rebellion, we bring our attention to a newcomer, Amari Williams, here in SWF. He is going to be facing off against, as it was mentioned on Twitter earlier this week. Oh, man. He is facing off against one of the men who was in that Elimination Chamber matchup Siler Jordan spoke of earlier. And this man is Lewis Luger. That's right, he is the brother of the current internet champion, Lewis, uh, uh, excuse me, Luke Luger. On Twitter, these two were going back and forth, and Amari made the challenge. Lewis Luger accepted. So let's see who is going to come out victorious and who's gonna come out on top here now. Right offhand, these two gentlemen could not be more different they are just miles from each other here Lewis Luger is roughly 450 pounds almost seven feet tall Omari on the other hand not so much look at the size difference here and Amari's gonna start this thing off in it oh man Lewis is gonna push him right away and a big clubbing forearm sends Amari down to the floor and he's gonna get hooked up, double underhooks, giant, giant knees right to the midsection of Amari. And I'm not sure Amari knows what he got himself into. Lu Lewis is seven, eight inches bigger than, I mean, just manhandling Amari right now, who happens to be light heavyweight. Oh my goodness, big shot by Lewis Luger and a kick to the back. Amari, my friend, you're gonna have to use your speed to your advantage. Possibly start taking down, working on the tree trunks 
of Luger. And look at that big shot to the midsection and a, well, a double axe handle, but it only stunned the big man. Oh my. He jumped up extremely high, and there we go, jumping neck breaker. And Lewis is down on the mat. Omari in control, it looks like, just whipping him around. Good idea to start working on the limbs, but you need to work it on those legs, my friend. And Lewis with the reversal, fireman's carry reversal on the much, much smaller Amari. As I said before, and look at this. Lewis hanging him up, good Lord. That's, he's coming down pretty high up in the air, over seven feet once Lewis lifts him up. And look at the knees. Oh man, the knees to the chest of Amari. Now could we see Lewis do the same to Amari as we saw at Capital Combat, what he did to Siler Jordan, who knows, my gosh. Now out here on the outside, Lewis dropping the knee and again, he is just gonna just slam those big giant knees right to the chest of Amari Williams. The ref is up to three, look at this, holy cow. Turned him inside out with that German suplex. Man, let's see what is, oh man. Amari is just, com just getting completely destroyed right now by the much, much bigger 450 pound Luger. We're up to seven now. These guys gotta get back in the ring. And there he goes, puts him back in the, oh, uh-oh. That can't be good for Amari, look at this. The ref keeping a close eye and a big splash right out there on the apron and Amari just slides out and down onto the ground and Lewis again taking it to the much smaller man. And again, German suplex into the, into the uh, side of the ring there, right under the apron. Oh, Amari with the reversal, and he's gonna take his time to get back in the ring, I don't blame him. From behind, and he picks up the big man and slams him down, right onto his back. But it looks like Amari's gotta get, he's really gotta get going here. Maybe cutting off the air supply to the Giants. Massive head, cutting off that air supply to the brain. Might be what Amari has in store, oh, uh-oh. Luger though, back up and big elbows right to the chest in midsection. More so to the chest just because of the height difference here. Look at this. Look at this. Luger's got him up. Oh, oh, he hooks him up in the tree of woe here. And oh, big size 15 boot right to the neck and he's gonna go for the pin here. One, two, and no, Amari still fights. Amari fights through it, and Luger seems to be a bit winded. Maybe this has uh, gone longer than he expected, which could play into right into Amari's hands as he does. He hits that elbow across the arm. Uh-oh. Blocked punch there by Luger. No. Amari's not going to let Luger hit him with that belly-to-belly. Jawbreaker, stunning the big man and sending him down to the mat. Not a bad idea there. And Amari goes for the boot of success, misses, but hits that jawbreaker once again. That boot of success is a punt kick. Luger was able to dodge it at the last second. Sending Luger now across the ring. Oh, look at this into a German suplex and bouncing off of those ropes is Amari. And Luger just stalking his prey, it looks like. Oh boy. Big elbow right across the back and that could be it. That could be it for Amari, look at this. Ooh, spine buster. Picks up Amari and drops him hard right across his back. Now Lewis has got him, got him up here, and Amari's still fighting. 
He is not ready to give up here. And again, he catches Lewis with that jumping neck breaker. And now it looks like Amari's fired up. He's gonna pick up the big man here. I don't know, I would try to keep him down on the mat. Shot to the chest. Oh, and a face plant to Lewis Luger. Now Amari, oh, oh man, I couldn't even get that out before Lewis reversed it. Stomping on the back now, he's gonna pick up, look at this, another jawbreaker, but this time Lewis manages to stand on his feet in a Pele kick. Good job ducking that giant clothesline from Lewis, and here we go. We're gonna see a boot of success, and no, Lewis is gonna dodge it again and just toss Amari Williams across the ring with that German suplex, my, my. And now, what's Lewis doing here? He's dragging him out. I thought maybe he would have gone for the pin, but he drops a big knee right across the lower back of Amari. Stomping on him again just to pick him up here. One knee is Amari Williams. Double under, oh! No, I mean, that's gotta take all the wind right out of you, I would think. Another big elbow drop. That is one of the closing moves here for Lewis Luger, but he doesn't look to be going for the pin just yet. No, Amari dodges it, gets out of the way, but gets tossed into the ring uh, turnbuckle there, and here comes Lewis with a massive clothesline. Oh, man. Amari might be out. He might just be out on his feet. Lewis again. Got that double underhook into the knees to the stomach. How, how is this, how is Lewis even functioning? I'm sorry, how is Amari even functioning? Just tossed again with that German suplex. Oh, ref getting on to Lewis. Ref needs to check on Amari to see if he's okay. See if he's still breathing. Lewis doesn't seem to care what the ref says. Nice reversal at the last minute there from Amari. We might be seeing Amari coming back here. No, fireman's carry. Reversal from Lewis. He's gonna pick Williams up. Kick to the midsection. Oh boy, look at this. This is the move. He's got him up. Is Amari gonna tap out or is he gonna? He is gonna tap out, ladies and gentlemen. And Lewis just throws Amari down to the ground. And, and Amari Williams can barely move, ladies and gentlemen. And your winner, my goodness. The massive Lewis Luger, 450 pounds. Oh, co come on, Lewis. Rev, get back in there and stop this madness. Get him off of him. Get him off of him. Come oh, that's enough. That is enough. Well, I know I wanted the ref to jump in there and, and stop Lewis Luger from attacking the much smaller Amari Williams that he just defeated, but I'm not quite sure what that referee could have done anyway. So moving on, that's unfortunate for Amari Williams, the newcomer. Don't get discouraged, young man. You will be back, that's for sure. Now, moving on, our second matchup of the evening as the lights are out. We have only seen this man a few times here in SWF. If you wanna see all of this man and everyone else's matches, you can head over to the website swfederation.com, check on the show results tab, and it will show you all the shows, all the matches, who won those matches and their records. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, he is the BC IGP World Heavyweight Champion, as you see that belt around his waist. We support our superstars in their other endeavors, not only in SWF, but as you can see, in their other federations as well. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Lord Draven. 
as he slowly makes his way to the ring. Now, as I said, we have seen this man a few times before. I want to say twice before, maybe. Um, we will see him again right now, ladies and gentlemen. Um, now that I'm going back through my notes here, it looks like we've only seen him one time. I'm on a showdown episode a few weeks back where he faced off against Malcolm Black. Unfortunately, Lord Draven did not win that match against Malcolm Black. Malcolm Black, of course, went on to win a television championship tournament oh, qualifier. There's a, lot, there's a lot going on. On the first episode of Uprising a few days ago, we will see that one shortly. But right now, it is Lord Draven, and he is taking on another man that we've only seen very little of. We have seen this person on the crowning achievement pay-per-view. We have seen this person on an episode of Showdown. This, ladies and gentlemen, Ryu Takeshi, and his first matchup was on that episode of Showdown where he faced off against Bruiser Brad and Evelyn Reeves in a triple threat match. The winner was added to the internet championship matchup at crowning achievement. In that match, it was a fatal four-way, Siler Jordan, Ryu Takeshi, Duke Zenda, and Will Steele. And as we all know, and have been told a billion times by this person, Siler Jordan won the internet championship there. So, what is Ryu Takeshi going to do here in this matchup? Man, it has been a long time since we have seen this man. A month? Two months at least? Wow. So he's got a lot to make up for. Or is he going to roll over? Is Lord Draven going to get the victory? Who knows? Let's find out right now. Draven is ready, and so is Takeshi. Ref checks both men, the bell rings, and they're gonna meet up center of the ring. Into the headlock goes Takeshi, and now into the hammer lock. Oh, he's gonna take Draven down just like that. Oh, tried to go for that belly to belly, but Draven's not having it. And a big clothesline from, whoa, whoa, what's he doing here? On the outside, and before he even gets to the top rope, Takeshi has moved out of the way. He's gonna pick him up to one knee now. Look at this. And, oh, went for a power bomb. Draven's able to get out of it, though. Oh, dropping him straight on his head. It is Draven. What a move that was. Fantastic move from Lord Draven, he's, he's called. Gut wrench slam right there. He's going to pick Takeshi up onto one knee. Are we going to see a powerbomb attempt? No. We're going to see a sliding flatliner. What a move that was. And now he taunts. Taunts Ryu Takeshi. Up now. Nope. Takeshi's going to throw him away. He is going to throw him right off. He's going to send Takeshi a card. They bounce off each other. Takeshi now sends Draven. No, oh, brings him right back over the overhead belly to belly from the man from Japan. That's right. And he is fired up, and Draven now trying to get some sort of. Uh oh, oh, what a move. Fantastic move there from Draven. Up onto the second rope, and a leg drop. That is a short leg drop right there, right across the throat of Takeshi. From one side of the ring to the other, and a, oh geez, a kick right to the side of the head. That'll disorient you for sure. Draven again with that gut wrench throw, and down for the pin. No, just a one count. Ryu Takeshi not giving up that easily, and again, 
Draven just deadlifts Takeshi and throws him down onto the mat. Not this time, short arm clothesline. Both men hit the mat. Takeshi putting all kinds of power into that. And he's gonna sit on the leg. Look at this. And just pushing on the legs of Draven. Is he gonna tap? No, he does not tap out there. Does not tap out there, but Takeshi telling Draven, bring it, my friend. He's gonna hook him up and a back body drop there. Nice move as Draven's gonna have to roll out of the ring here just to catch his breath, just to catch, get his bearings once again. And a big punch sends Draven to the outside. Does Takeshi now follow him? He does. He does. The ref begins the count. And now look at Takeshi. He's got Draven up. You know what? I can do that too, he says. He drops Draven. Probably a little worse there on the outside and a kick to the to the chest. And now nice arm drag there. Ref is up to four. No. Draven went for a, oh geez, went for a DDT on the outside. Takeshi throws him away and blasts him with a big knee and a big kick right to the face. Both men back in the ring here. Nice arm drag again. Oh, into a cutter. Into a cutter from Draven. My goodness. And now he's on the second rope, taunting to the crowd. Oh boy. What are we gonna see here from Draven? Hooks them up. Oh, look at this. Hammerlock. DDT center of the ring. Goes for the pin. One, two. Wow. Pleading with the ref. That's gotta be three. The ref says not yet. And Takeshi not ready to give up. Takes down Draven. He's gonna back up. Oh boy. Says, this is it, folks. He, t he says, this is it for Lord Draven. Look at this. Look at this. What's he doing here? Spins him around, knee to the face. Oof, big clothesline there. Nice move from Ryu Takeshi. And just rubbing those forearms across the face and eyes. Uh-oh. Look at this. He's got him hooked up. How can he tap out? Oh, knee to the face. He's not gonna tap out. He's not gonna give up that easily. Wow, the big man going all the way around the shoulders and into a DDT. Nice move there by Ryu. He's gonna drag. Oh, we're gonna see, see this again. Spins him around and bam. Great move from Takeshi there. And he, he's gonna pick him up. He's not gonna wait for him to stand up at all. He's gonna head straight up in the air. Oh, the shouting from Ryu Takeshi. Instead of going for the pin, he continues to attack this man. And he, now we're gonna see it again. We saw it so many times from Draven and now we see it from Takeshi. He goes down for the pin and no, just a two count. Draven. Kicking out Takeshi now. Can't believe what he's seeing, and oh boy. Calling and Draven up to his feet. He hooks him up. Emerald Flosion from Takeshi. And a smart move getting between Draven and the ropes. And a three count right there. That here is your winner, ladies and gentlemen. Ryu Takeshi getting the victory over Lord Draven. Nice arm drag reversal there from Draven. Right into that cutter. Hammerlock DDT, center of the ring, right on the eagle. But that is not enough to put away Ryu Takeshi as we see the shouting. And that gut wrench, but let me just, tossing, just tossing Draven across the ring. Now his Boot might have been under the ropes there, just a hair, but the referee being on the other side doesn't see it, and here's how it ends, bam. Emerald Flosion, ladies and gentlemen, and here's your winner, Ryu Takeshi.
What a matchup that was between these two gentlemen. Great, great matchup. Well now folks, we have got something special for everybody here on Rebellion. Introducing first, which we have seen this tag team more than a few times. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Dino D, SDC. It is aggression. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first matchup in our SWF Rebellion Tag Team Championship Tournament. That's right, these two gentlemen are the first to enter the ring for that tournament. Now, as I've said, we have seen aggression a few times here so far. We have seen them on Showdown where they faced off against the Fallen Kingdom and Malcolm Black and Bruiser Brad where unfortunately they came up on the losing end there. We also saw them on an episode of Rebellion where they took on the team of Kid Hades and Calypso who were feuding for that Elite Heavyweight Championship and Kid Hades ended up taking the brunt of that beating um, only to be left to take that beating by Calypso. He was not going to get involved in any way. And Kid Hades ended up uh, paying the price for it in the end. So probably a strategically smart move by Calypso. Not so much as a let's, there's no I am team kind of thing. He let, um, he let Kid Hades take the, the brunt of that beating. Well, folks, their opponent, they are a new team here in SWF. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Hounds of Havoc. It is Mahadi Khan and Mateo. Ladies and gentlemen, making their way to us from GPW as well. Um, as you know, Ryan Riley from GPW. These two gentlemen, lucky enough to come into SWF and immediately are entered into the Rebellion Tag Team Championship Tournament. Let's see how the newcomers fare against, if you want to call them veterans here, in aggression. Here we go, folks. Hounds of Havoc, Mateo on the right, Mahdi Khan on the left. These fans are excited because, well, we have tag team tournament action. The, the ending of this will crown the first ever Rebellion Tag Team Champions. Mahani Khan pushing SDC into his own corner. I'm not how sm not sure how smart that is on Khan's part. But now they, they lock up again into a headlock. And SDC is going to push Khan across the ring. And oh, wow. What a spinning kick from SDC. And immediately goes after Khan. Nice throw into a standing Phoenix Splash. My goodness. SDC taking it to Khan. And a top rope shooting star. This match might be over before it even gets started. Stomping on the arm of Khan now. Good grief. SDC really putting it on. Mahani well, Khan right now. Are we even going to get a chance to see Mateo? That's, that's what I want to know. Khan now bringing Mateo in just like that. And he's going to go after SDC who slides out of the way. But it doesn't matter. Oh, wow. Full Nelson slam right there. Nice move from the newcomer. He's going to hook up. Oh, oh man. Forearm shots right across the forehead of SDC. And the ref just standing by. He's going to pick... SDC up and oof, face first from that fireman's carry. Dino D wanted the tag, but not able to get out to SDC in time. And look at this, center of the ring lays SDC. Mateo now is gonna pick him up, no reversal into a DDT, nice move there, holy cow. 
from the second rope into a moonsault. SDC is high flying, boys and girls. He's gonna toss into the corner of his teammate. Oh, not able to make the tag. Look at the spine buster from Mateo, holy cow. Big move there, oh, he gets a little close to Dino. Now up on the second turnbuckle, he's gonna look back and try to drop that elbow and SDC's gonna dive out of the way at the last second into his own corner. And now the first double team move, he's got, uh oh, look at this, right on the knee. Oh man, right onto the knee of SDC. And that's not a bad way to work on your opponent. Mateo, excuse me, Khan now, watching. Is he gonna let the tag happen? He does. And Dino D comes in and a single leg drop kick to start things off. Big clothesline. Oh, dodges now. Mahadi Khan is gonna push that last drop kick away from himself and now into these double underhook spinning right into a DDT. Wow. Holy cow. Mahani Khan now tagging in Mateo. Khan's gonna step back out onto the apron and Dino's gonna dodge the stomp, come right back in. Sin oh, nice Japanese arm drag from Dino D. SDC slowly making his way to his feet on the outside. Big shot to the midsection. Kick now to the side and a super kick. Khan getting the crowd fired up. Mateo standing there just trash talking Dino D. Is he gonna let him get back to his corner? It sure doesn't look like it. Mateo is gonna send Dino into the corner. Send him way up top. Oof, big shot to the face. Look at this. What is he doing here? He's got him up. Oh my God. Oh my God, a superplex to the outside. Holy cow. And a knee to the face to follow it up. That probably brought Dino D out of, out of uh, his unconscious state. How crazy was that? What, that was a big move here in this tag team matchup. And look at this. Oh, jump, nice jumping 450. One of my moves as well. Now Dino's got, okay, he's got Mateo back in the ring as the ref counts to seven. Man. Dino took that superplex like a champ and looks like he's gonna bring in his tag team partner. I don't blame him. Look at this. Up, oh, into a code breaker. That could be it for Mateo, but no, it doesn't look like he's going for the pin. Looks like he's gonna let him stew in a standing Phoenix splash over to the middle rope now. And a second one. Nice job there from SDC, but not going for the pin. Big bicycle knee right to the face. And that could be it for Mateo as he goes down. One, two, no, Khan on the outside, cheering his partner on, pumping his partner up to get him to kick out, and he finally does, only to catch elbows right to the top of the head. Up now. Oh, nice reversal, he's gonna send SDC over the top rope, tag in his partner. SDC's gonna slide back in. Oh, elbow to the face by Mahadi Khan. Into the turnbuckle now, tagging in his partner. Look at this. And, oh, wow. Fireman's carry tosses him right into Dino D, who hits him with that German suplex. Probably not the best idea to go for, oh, I was gonna say to go for a pin in your opponent's corner, but SDC comes diving in and takes out the referee. That could make a difference here later if the referee stays down for too long. Dino D tagging in SDC now. And he goes from one side of the ring 
to the other and it dives on the referee again. All right, these guys, these guys need to get out of here. That's for sure. We can't, we can't keep attacking our, our referees this way. And Mahadi's gonna throw SDC down on the ground, forearm shot to the face. Look at Mahadi Khan. Oh man, what a move. Big alley-oop right there. Big face buster and here we go. And a curb stomp center of the ring over in his own corner. Instead of going for the pin, he sets him up. A second curb stomp and SDC's busted open. This would be the time to go for the pin. They could possibly get their first victory and get the first win in this tag team tournament. He's gonna drag him over towards his own corner. Very smart, going for the pin. Oh, and using the ropes, one. Oh, a Dino D gets in there and stops the pin from happening. Mahadi goes after him, but misses. My goodness, look at this. Drop kick right to the side of the head. Stomping away now on the aggression member here. I was just about to say the momentum has shifted into the Hounds of Havoc. Uh, momentum here and a nice power bomb, double underhook, tiger bomb there from SDC. Taunting right, oh, right in the face of Mateo who is now tagged in. Big jump, oh, man, he jumped high for that knee right across the face of SDC Mateo now. Bringing him up to his feet, looking to go for something. But SDC is able to reverse it with a DDT. And now he's just stalking, heading up to the second rope. Phoenix splash from the second rope and quickly goes for the pin. Wow, Mateo kicked out at one. Mahani Khan comes into the ring and almost gets it from SDC. Into, yeah, there we go, into his corners. And now what's he, he's gonna pick him up, set him up on the top rope. Dino D jumps down to not get in the way of what's about to happen here. It looks like he's going for a superplex of his own. Oh, rolls through it. Nice move, Falcon Arrow, after he rolls through the superplex. What a move there from SDC. And, it, oh, SDC went for a jumping DDT. It looked like super kick from Mateo. Mateo with the super kick. And now sending SDC into his corner. Oh, jawbreaker there from SDC. Standing now right in front of Mahadi Khan and he's gonna go with that double underhook suplex. My goodness, what a series of events. SDC's got him up now. Ichinoku driver, center of the ring. Not gonna let him get the tag to Khan. He gets tossed over the top rope and oh! Reversal into a sunset flip. He's gonna go for the pin. One. Two, and that catches it as Dino D. It's Mahadi Khan with a crucifix. Wow. Wow, what an unexpected way to win for aggression. You see that side kick right there. Super kick from Mateo. Sends Dino D down to the mat. Look at this. Mateo sending Dino on the outside with a huge superplex. I mean, you don't just decide to superplex somebody to the outside. Alley oop face buster from Mahadi Khan. And ladies and gentlemen, your winners. And moving on to the second round of our SWF Rebellion Tag Team Tournament. It is Dino D and SDC. Ladies and gentlemen, aggression.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to SWF Rebellion. If you haven't picked up your Gen merchandise, go head over there and get it now. As you see, making her way to the ring, it is the female member of Fallen Kingdom and Rebecca Evans. But as we heard earlier tonight, Rebecca Evans has been traded along with Siler Jordan and Mason Foster over to Uprising where I'm just getting confirmation, Rebecca Evans has been entered into the Uprising Women's Championship Tournament. That's fantastic for her. her. Great opportunity for Rebecca Evans and the Fallen Kingdom as Bruiser Brad is in the Heavyweight Championship Tournament there, as well as the Tag Team Tournament with his tag team partner, Malcolm Black. Ladies and gentlemen, Rebecca Evans is standing in the ring. These fans are ready to go, ready to see the Fallen Kingdom member in action as she takes on a member of the roster that we haven't gotten to see, as I've said many times so far in this telecast. We haven't gotten to see quite as much as we'd like to here on SWF, and that is ladies and gentlemen is Rouge and Jolly that's right she is from Punjab India by far the farthest person or, or the the person who's traveled the farthest for SWF we saw her previously in episode 2 of Rebellion take on Tiffany where she lost that matchup before we saw her again on the sixth episode of showdown where she faced off against Princess and lost that match as well can Rebecca Evans get a victory here? She has gotten a victory over Danielle Jane um, and also a loss in that uh, there was a five women's battle royal on an episode five of Showdown. That was won by Malaysia. But Rebecca Evans, one and one so far here in SWF. And Roj and Jolly, 0 oh and 2, unfortunately. But she's going to look to reverse her luck and get things going her way as the ref rings the bell. These two ladies meet in the ring, and first thing that happens, Rebecca Evans hits her with a northern lights right into the center of the ring, into the headlock now. And I wonder if Rebecca Evans is going to treat this match differently since she knows she's being traded to Uprising, does she still go for the victory? Does she just put on a great match? Who knows? Is she going to give Rouge the opportunity to win as Rouge is staying here on Rebellion? Oh, and a back body drop and a big kick to the back. It doesn't look like Rebecca Evans is going to take it easy on Rouge and Jolly at all. Big kick right to the chest, nope, stop this time into a dragon whip suplex, very nice. Very nice move there by Rouge. As she now goes to pick up, oh, big chop. And oh, big shot to the face and a spinning back kick there, right to the stomach. And it looked like Rebecca was gonna toss Rouge out to the floor. Pulled her back in 
Rouge had to get out of the ring. Nice suplex there. Oh, and, and the pin. No, just a one. Good move there. She slides out of the ring to regain her composure. Slides back in and catches her with that double underhook suplex. And then really wrenching the arm of, of Evans here. And Jolly, look at this. Whoa! What a reversal. And then it delivers a German suplex of her own. And again, and Jolly's going to go out to the apron. Hopes to catch her breath, it looks like. Rebecca going right over there and a punch knocks her down to the floor. Rebecca's gonna chase after her here on the outside, on the far side of the of the ring here. Look at that. Oh man. Dropping Roge right on her lower back, then getting her back into the ring. You gotta bring him in. That's where you're gonna win. Rebecca Evans, no block. Big forearm now. And another shot by Evans. These ladies taking it to each other. Another Northern Lights suplex there from Rebecca and driving those elbows square to the top of the head of Rouge and Jolly. I believe I'm saying Rouge and Rouge. I'm not quite sure how to say this woman's name. So we're gonna say Rouge getting her neck cranked here by Rebecca. And oh, it looked like she was going for it again, but has Rouge up to one up to one knee. Shot, look at this. And another German suplex. Oh, she hangs on. Hooks her up. Tiger suplex there. And straight jacket German right onto the back of the head. And that is going to send Rebecca down for the pin here. No, just a two count. Rebecca ready to get this thing going here. What are we about to see? A kick to the stomach. And, oh, drops her right on her face. And now goes for the pin. Is this going to be it for Rouge and Jolly? And it is. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner is Rebecca Evans. She takes that victory over to Uprising with her. The, she is pumped and the fans are pumped as well. Rouge and Jolly. Rebecca says, thank you for a great match. And Jolly obliges. Sends her off to Uprising with a victory under her belt. Coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, is a triple threat match. Introducing first, the man formerly known as Brett Storm. He was in a tournament previously, up on Uprising actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Not quite sure what Brett's doing here on Rebellion. Or excuse me, Morpheus, I should say. I'm not quite sure what Morpheus is doing here on Rebellion. I'm going to have to check with our committee to see what is happening. As Morpheus should be on Uprising. Anyway, J Primetime Green... He is definitely supposed to be here on Uprising, or excuse me, on Rebellion. He looks to get a victory here in this triple threat match. I want to say Jay Green is um, 0 for 2 as well as Rouge and Jolly. We've got Eli Robledo coming to the ring. The last time we saw Eli was... Ooh, man. It's been quite some time, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Let's take a look back here at the notes. The last time we saw Robledo was ooh, way back, episode 5, right after um, Crowning Achievement. It was the SWF Rebellion episode. He ended up taking on the champion in Calypso. Previously in a... Fatal five-way matchup, it looks like. Uh, six, Six-way battle royal. And a showdown episode where Duke Zenda won. And, of course, went on to face Siler Jordan, Will Steele, 
and Ray Takeshi for the internet championship. And we all know how that played out. So let's get this thing going here. Morpheus down to one knee. Jay, oh, he bumps into him. He's going to toss Eli across the ring and a big insecurity to the back of the head. Morpheus now sliding underneath Jay, drops him down hard across his knee, right in the stomach. Robledo rolls out. Jay with a nice jawbreaker there. Shot to the gut of Morpheus and big kicks right to the chest. Eli making his way to his feet, slides back into the ring. Morpheus up on the shoulders. No, he's going to get out of that. And oh my God, he's biting the forehead of Jay Green. Holy cow. These guys seem to really be teaming up on primetime here who dodges out of the way and catches Eli. Nice move there. Morpheus dragging primetime to the other side of the ring. What's he doing here? Hooking him. Oh, jeez. That plastic mask right across the face of Jay Green, and he's going to send Eli out as well. But he's going to follow Eli to the outside here. Eli, though, is fighting back, and a drop kick sends Morpheus right into the bear, or excuse me, right into the apron. Runs in and delivers a belly to belly to Jay Green. Morpheus making his way to his feet. Look at Eli, drops Jay right across the top turnbuckle, face first. Morpheus on the apron there. These guys, uh, oh my, what a German suplex, and Jay is going to break it up right away. Um, all of these gentlemen have had a tough time here in SWF as Morpheus rolls out to the outside. Somebody's going to come out on top, the winner. And every man for himself, of course, as Jay goes down for the pin after those shots to the head. No, just a one count, if that. But he's going to go right after those shots again. Elbows to the top of the head. Morpheus finally making his way to his feet. Slides back into the ring. And, oh, what a move by Jay. Ducking Morpheus' attack, delivering a clothesline. Jay Green is on the offensive. And look at that. What a series of punches from Jay Green. He is going trouble, no. Going for trouble in paradise. Brett Storm dodges it. Terminating spike, I said Brett Storm as of course I meant Morpheus. Morpheus going for the pin, no. Eli was taunting on the turnbuckle. Oh wee, big move there. Just to get up immediately. And catch Morpheus, send him into the turnbuckle. Big boot to the face. Look at this. Reverse Frankensteiner. Nice move. And again, he goes for the pin on primetime. But I was, yep, I was just gonna say he might have been resting for just a hair too long. Get the pin put on him. Real short leg drop right across the throat of Jay. He's going for the pin again. Eli making his way to his feet. No. Just a one count once again. And look at Morpheus hanging Eli over the top rope. Oh, Morph, what are you doing? He's got, oh God, he's got Eli by the face and dear Lord. Those head butts over and over and over. He rolls him over into the ring. Look at this, begins raining punches and just slamming that elbow right across the face. He is fired up. Jay Green now gets in the face of Morpheus only to get whipped and a leg drop right across the arm. Jay's gonna roll out. Morpheus going for the pin on Eli in just a one count. My goodness. The action is crazy here. Nice move by Robledo to slide out and look at it, he catches him. Backbreaker. Oh, he's hanging on. A second one, and yes, a third one right there. Eli Robledo just drops him with the Irish curse trifecta. Goes for the pin and just a two count. Whoa, nice job there from Jay Green. Immediately taken to Brett Storm. Eli's gonna work himself out of that move from Jay. 
and go for the pin. Nice idea there. One, two. Wow. Wow, a reversal gives Eli the win. How That was an interesting ending for sure. If you take a look back at the replay, Jay Green blasting him up with a Samoan Blitz. Tries to go for the Trouble in Paradise, but Brett, excuse me, Morpheus dodges it, delivers a terminating spike to Jay Green. And here we see that Irish curse trifecta on Morpheus from Eli. There's a, oh my goodness. That can't feel good once, let alone three times across your back. And ladies and gentlemen, this is not how it ends. We know Morpheus kicks out, but your winner is Eli Robledo, ladies and gentlemen, picking up his first victory here in SWF. Could we see a pattern? Could we see a winning streak? Have things changed for Eli Robledo? Only time will tell, but as of right now, he stands tall as the winner of this triple threat matchup. Well, folks, what a great triple threat matchup that was. Eli Robledo getting his first victory here in SWF. But now for the main event of the evening, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first your reigning defending SWF elite heavyweight champion. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Calypso. Calypso coming off the victory over Kid Hades at Capital Combat, and along with Veronica Haas, becoming the longest reigning champions here in SWF so far. Uprising, of course, is running those tournaments for the heavyweight championship, the Phoenix championship, which is our women's division, and the television championship, and the tag team championship. My goodness, lots of stuff going on excuse me, over on Uprising. We, of course, have our Tag Team Championship tournament going on right now. But we are not talking about that. Not at the moment, folks. As we have Calypso's opponent one more time. And ladies and gentlemen, it is Kid Hades. Now, Kid Hades making his way to the ring after suffering his second championship loss, both of them, of course, being to Calypso, Kid Hades comes down looking for redemption. I know I would be, as I'm sure you would be watching at home and any of those guys in the back and girls in the back, they'd be looking to redeem themselves and they'd be looking to prove why they belong and Kid Hades looks to do the same, why he belongs at the top of the contendership for Calypso's Elite Heavyweight Championship. Is he going to do that here tonight? Only time will tell. Calypso, of course, coming off a huge victory in beating uh, Kid Hades at Capital Combat. So Calypso's confidence is through the roof, while Kid Hades, I'm sure, he's feeling quite down on the situation, but he looks ready to go as the flames die down and the fans take their seats. These two gentlemen get ready to do battle one last time as the ref checks both men, gets ready to ring the bell here. What is this? Calypso looks irritated. Oh my God, it's Leo McKay. Ladies and gentlemen, Leo McKay is coming out and Calypso seems quite irritated that he is out here. Leo McKay taunting the champion, pointing at him, telling him to stay in that ring. Calypso looking, just staring at Leo McKay. Well, what he's, what he's doing out here, he takes a seat here at ringside. And now we can get this match underway as the referee rings the bell. These two men hook up in the center of the ring. Hades backed into the corner. And the ref's gonna try to break him up here and a clean break. Good job on both of those guys. Leo McKay, as we know, is coming off that rivalry with Vice, which ended at Capital Combat, and that Falls Count Anywhere matchup where 
Leo McKay pinned Vice up near the stage at the top of the ramp on the concrete out there and gets the victory. And it looks like Leo McKay is here to claim his stake for that Elite Heavyweight Championship. What a big move there by Calypso. Follows it up with a big splash right across the chest of Kid Hades. Calypso picking up Hades. Calypso's always been that guy who continues the onslaught, who continues the attack. Oh, nice eat defeat there from Calypso. As soon as a move is done, look at that. Ooh, full Nelson into a face buster. As soon as the move is done, Calypso quick to make the next move. Picking the man up or doing just like this. Get to your feet, says Calypso. As he dives off with a big elbow. No, K Kid Hades dodges it, gets out of the way, and delivers a big clothesline to the champion. Quickly going after the arm of Calypso. And now Kid Hades in control. Setting him up. Snap suplex. Nice move by Hades here. I wonder what, I just don't understand what Leo McKay is doing out here. So he just sits over there, I'm sure in the back of the mind. Oh my gosh, he got caught. Hades with a trap suplex. I'm sure Leo McKay sits in the back of the mind of Calypso, as it didn't look like he was here for any other reason but to distract the champion. And looks to, like I said, claim his spot as next in line for Calypso's Elite Championship. Calypso now being drug up to his feet, sending Hades into the corner, nice move there. And Leo waving at him. Calypso, don't get distracted by this man here on the outside. Leo McKay and Calypso face to face, trading words and oh, big right hand to the face of the champion and Look at Leo McKay clapping his hands. That looks to be his plan all along, was to come out here, distract the champion. And he's done just that as Leo McKay makes his way to the back. Calypso being picked up, but wiggles free and drops Hades right down on his head. Right out there on the outside. As I've said many, many times before, that is padding there, but it's only about an inch thick, and that's hard concrete underneath. As the ref reaches number five, Calypso says, get in the ring. And Hades, oh, nice reversal. Oh, and a big dro low drop kick, taking out the legs of the somewhat quicker Calypso. The ref gets down to count one, two, no. Just as the ref's hand hit the mat for two, Calypso is able to kick out. Look at Hades going way up top and quickly Oh my God, a twisting moonsault lands flat for Kid Hades, who lands right on his stomach. And now he's gonna snapmare and get Calypso into a headlock and try to get some rest. I don't blame him here. He's uh, kind of been getting, while he seemed to be somewhat in control, Calypso getting the last few attacks in on him, even if one of those is self-inflicted. Elbows to that damaged midsection into the corner now goes oh and an elbow to the face to Calypso putting all of his strength into that big right hand Kid Hades delivers one at a kick to the side of the head the mist he hits him with the green mist and a knee to the face Calypso stumbles backwards but grabs Kid Hades and tosses him and no goes for that knee Calypso or excuse me Hades is able to dodge it but he's got the champion set up Pop-up cutter that go to Hades to Calypso. He has been hit with that many times before. But is he going to be able to kick out of it here tonight in the main event? Yes, he does. Kid Hades is not happy about that. Pleading to the referee and telling him you need to count faster. Seemed like a slow count. Hades now sending Calypso into the corner. Oh, nice job there reversing by Calypso. Hades looked to be, oh my God. Big running knee to the face of Calypso from Kid Hades and that blood we can see is coming down right through the eye holes of that mask. Calypso's been busted open and a choke, somewhat of a choke slam STO modification. 
And a two count there just from Hades as he gets up on the top rope and taunts to the crowd. I don't think you want to let the champion rest. And just as I say that, he rakes the arm across the shoulder. Kick to the stomach now. Look at this, double underhooks. Guys, oh, knees right to the stomach. That's gonna take all the wind right out of Kid Hades as it's already been taken out. So he missed that twisting moonsault. Look at this, rolling through. Nice move there from the champion. Hooking him by the head. Oh my God, neck breaker. Dropping the back of the head right across the knee. And as I said, Clipso going right after Hades, not letting him catch his breath. And as we see here, the cosmic clash from Calypso. And he is calling him up right now. He's stumbling to his feet, the Stardust. And he hooks him with that jumping neck breaker. He calls the Stardust and a two count as Kid Hades kicks out. And Calypso wanting more. Calypso now climbing the top rope, setting him up. 6.30 Centon, Falling Star quickly jumps on him for the pin. One, two, and no. The ref wisely, quickly able to respond. As Hades gets that elbow up, the ref doesn't hit the mat for three. And now into a chin lock from Calypso as he pulls on the face and the chin area, stretching the neck of Kid Hades. And it looks like Hades has got him by the back of the head into a jawbreaker, almost a modified stunner right there. Forearm shot to the face. The mist again. He's hit him with that green mist, and this time Calypso does not get the advantage. Look at this, what's he doing here? He's gonna hang Calypso in the tree of woe. And picks him up, backstabber from the turnbuckle. My goodness, and he looks to be worn out a little bit. Seems trying to catch his breath here. I don't blame him for trying to catch his breath, but I don't know if I would give Calypso that much time to rest as he slowly makes his way to his feet. And as he does, Kid Hades catches him and sets him up for the go-to Hades. Drops him right down onto his face, that pop-up cutter. Folks, I think that might be it for our champion as he rolls Calypso over one, two, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Kid Hades gets a victory over the SWF Elite Champion. But is it too little, too late? As we see the first pop-up cutter go to Hades right there. Leo McKay comes out, distracts the Elite Champion at the beginning of the match, distracts him later on in the middle or so of the match where Kid Hades kind of gets the advantage and a sucker punch right square to the nose of the elite champion. I think Leo McKay may have gotten into the head of Calypso here. And Kid Hades definitely, definitely took advantage of it. That is for sure. Hitting two, go to Hades, spraying him with that poison mist. There's the, there it is right there. And ladies and gentlemen, that put the champ out. Kid Hades, ladies and gentlemen, is your winner. He sits in the ring as Calypso, unable to move. Folks, that is going to do it for us here on Rebellion. Thank you all so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the SWF YouTube channel. Hit that little bell for notifications. We'll see you soon.